Hey everyone, this is Paul Casey, the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame Zoom meeting, educational video series. And we're continue our series of the art of war, Kempo style. Uh, today, we're very lucky to have some amazing men that have an incredible background in Kempo and related arts. And today we're going to sort of discuss some points of Kempo and their interpretations of uh, the discussion. I will use some reference books, but before I go any further, I want to introduce uh, our uh, participants. So all the way from Florida, give a warm welcome to Senior Master of the Arts, Mr. Lee Wedlake. Hello, Lee. Always good to be here, Paul. Oh, well, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. From Southern California, Master Marty Zaninovich. Hello, Marty. How are you? Hi, Paul. It's Thanks for having me you. on. Doing pretty well. Thank you. I, I love your background, man. You look so cool. The future is here. And finally, all the way from the Washington area, Master Todd Durgan. Hello, Todd. How are you doing, sir? Pleasure and honor, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's always fun to have you guys on because it's going to be interesting. So I'm going to reference a few things here, and I got to read with the book with the glasses. So let's start off the top. Um, the reference today is we're going to be talking about uh, a wonderful subject, body mechanics body mechanics, and uh, I'm going to reference in the body mechanics uh, Mr. Parker's writings. I'm going to use two of his treatises. The first one will be for the definition, which is the Encyclopedia of Kempo, which came out in 1991, I believe. When, 91, 92. Um, 92. I'm sorry. 92, I think it is. I th okay, 92. If you say it's 92, do we question the senior master of the arts? And it says it came out. Evidently, yes. Copyright, 1992. Way to go. See, you can always go to the senior master. to find Sharp as a tack. And then <laughs> we're going to go to Infinite Insights, Volume 5, uh, The Mental and Physical Applications, which is a great book. And I know, that, uh, I know that Todd uses this a lot of reference. He goes in here and he reads a lot and he brings out with his writings. And he has a second book coming out soon. Um, I know Marty has many of these uh, theories and concepts and principles in his teachings and learnings from Huck Planis, as well as uh, Danny Inasano and such. So I will read, first of all, uh, two things out of here, out of two other treatises that I love. I like to use them. One of them is The Art of War, The Art of War, Sun Tzu. And it's, it's wonderful because he says... Um, in page 53, he says, in war, then, let your great object be victory, not a lengthy campaign. A great object of victory, not lengthy campaigns. In other words, don't waste a lot of time. Let's get directly into this stuff, okay? That's part one. You look at Miyamoto Musashi, and you say, here he goes, the way is a specific and determinedly Deliberate methodology. The ancient masters must be studied constantly without respite, even when the practitioner thinks he has a grasp of the knowledge. Gosh, it sounds like the Kempo community. <laughs> the ones I at least talk to. Uh, the last two books I have here, I'd use these for foundation, uh, from our founding grandmaster, Ed Parker. And it's, um, it's important he looks at the knowledge and the stages of it, and he says that, um, interesting, motion analysis. Motion without meaning serves no purpose. Motion without meaning serves no purpose. And today, when we get done talking, I hopefully we get past scratching the surface on uh, this discussion of body mechanics. We'll know a little bit more. Finally, last but not least, uh, I referenced this book. I think it's great if you get a chance Pick it up a copy. Um, it's important because there's a story in it. And it's uh, knowing where to hit. It's on page 153 in Lessons with Ed Parker by our senior master of the arts. And the conclusion on it is, um, I'm going to sum it up basically. The story is basically talks about management of circles and appears frequently. And, and, and Parker talks about this between somebody complaining about the cost factor of a repair on, on a, a particular uh, thing that was in somebody's shop. And they, at the bottom, the judge said, uh, he was talking to the expert and the expert says, he said there was $50 for the time spent on the call 
And the other $1,950 was having the expertise of knowing where to hit. So that is why we go to these three gentlemen to find out where to hit and how to hit. And this is just all these collective thoughts helps us to understand a little better about what Kemp was about. Now, Mr. Parker writes in here in this book out of 92, and it's under body mechanics. And if, if I can get to the right page, it's page 20 for those that follow these things. And if you don't have this book, you better have it in your, um, in your library soon. Anyway, he says, the technical utilization of the body and the science of motion and action that allows the forces therein to be fully maximized. In short, highly technical knowledge of the proper use of the body in reaching or obtaining a maximum results. Senior Master of the Arts, would you please explain that all to us? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, it, you know, there are things in the martial arts that we call uh, golden threads or universal truths. You have to have them throughout. This is the value of studying other martial arts and as well as uh, sports, uh, physical movement systems, Tai Chi, yoga, dance, uh, fencing and, and so on. So you keep finding these things like, oh, the body only works a certain number of ways efficiently. And they seek to maximize that. And it has been said by uh, high level martial artists and others is that you can learn how to do something well enough. You can learn how to punch well enough. And the story that comes to mind is about Tiger Woods who at one point in his career was arguably the best golfer on the planet. And he got himself a coach. And what happened was his um, performance degraded and then it spiked again. The degrading process happened because he was in the process of learning new body mechanics in order to become more efficient, hit the ball farther, harder, more accurately. So this is why we get a coach, we get a, uh, a karate coach, we get a fencing coach, we get a baseball coach, somebody that can help us fine tune these things. Uh, we're lucky enough in our system that we have some player coaches like Bob White. He used to play the game out there very, very well, and he can coach people to learn how to do that. But it's the sequences of utilizing the kinetic chain of the body properly with the proper bracing angles and body alignment to be efficient in your blocks, punches, strikes, maneuvers, etc. You know, you had discussed, we had talked about this, and you sent me a, a, a document. You're working on a new book. Do you know the title of that book yet? Uh, well, I've got a working title and I'm still negotiating with the publisher to make okay, it. Okay, so uh, we'll leave it, we'll leave it uh, vacant for yeah. right now. Uh, but you're, you talk about embodied mechanics and whatnot. You broke it down and you were looking at these areas. And then I'm going to reference this, these two, our other two uh, experts here. Uh, the purpose is obviously you just described. Okay. And then you looked about, um, uh, I guess it is it rotation and direction. Was that correct? Uh, position and direction. A position, I, Mike, I can't even read my, there are four, uh, four positions. And then I guess that intersects into eight lines in the IKKA, correct? Yeah, the IKKA path. Yeah, okay. Right. Then you talked about coordination and you use CNS. You did, talked about fine, uh, fine motor skills, gross motor skills, and then hand-eye coordination. You talked about agility, balance, isolated movements, and then there's another thing we'll go to. So let's walk through these points. Maybe you can, uh, you know, just go over them briefly and then I can get some feedback from Todd and Marty on it. So let's talk about position and directions and why it's important to recognize the, uh, the four positions. Well, the, uh, the reason I brought that up is because sometimes these things are so simple that they get right by you. You can't see the forest for the trees. And there are really only four hand positions. You can have both palms forward, both palms back, you know, one forward, one back. So you get, got the four. And they work on the eight lines, which Mr. Parker isolated in the patch and then expanded on in the universal pattern. And then he made that multiplanar, which is what uh, Todd's forte is. And uh, our ideal phase techniques are based on learning how to use the hands in these configurations. Of palm in, palm out, right, left, up, down, and then working on the, the lines forward and back. 
to pick those up. So it's important that uh, if you're going to pick these techniques apart as you get to be more advanced, I mean, to the beginner, this doesn't really make up, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to impress this on them at first, unless they're really into motion, like there's somebody who's a dancer that comes into karate or, or something like that. Um, but they're important points for beginners, or not beginners, but for advanced people, because it gives us a way to relate techniques in another way. It's funny you brought this up because this relates directly to what Sun Tzu said, not a lengthy endeavor. Quick, get to the point. In other words, directness. Todd, your thoughts on what uh, Lee just said? 